sign up for the Cigars and Sea Stories monthly giveaway. It's simple. All you need to do is go to cigarsandseastories.com, sign up for our newsletter by clicking subscribe. When you do, you're going to be given a referral link to share with your network. Every time you share, you earn points. Anytime one of your friends subscribes, you earn an extra five points. Whoever has the most shares and the most points at the end of the month wins the gift package. So subscribe right now at cigarsandseastories.com. On this episode of Cigars and Sea Stories, Bennett and Mike are sitting down to talk about, well, we're going to talk about kind of like the office as we know it. See, because it's weird. People ask me, like, for instance, Brian was asking me the other day, Brian the Civvy, right? He was asking me the other day, how do you guys set all this stuff up out in the field? Like, don't you guys have a little, obviously not a pop-up office, but how do you set up shop? But... But it's kind of like a but, pop-up but it's kind of like a pop-up office, right? I mean, it really is. I think in a lot of those situations, everybody well, it definitely it definitely can be, you know. I and a lot of that depends on what echelon of uh, you know you're you're working in, I guess. You know what where what what billet you're in at the time. Yes. Oh yeah, definitely. Well, because. Hmm. It's funny because when you go into that situation, you understand that you're going to be living and working there for a couple of days, depending. Right. So my brain immediately goes to kind of where life started as a cat team and your office is rolling around with you. And then you go and you bivouac somewhere. See, it's weird because everybody else. Everybody else aside from military would be like, oh, those are survival situations like you're way out in the middle of the desert like no not really i mean we're just kind of hanging out you know that's the office that's where we were so we drive out there and we go out there for a couple of days and then we come back i mean it's really not that big of a deal i i don't think that a whole lot of people can even wrap their brain around how do you sleep and do everything i yeah so it's interesting because when I first came into the Marine Corps, I learned how to set up mortar, mortar systems. And I was like, oh, okay, this is kind of, you know, you're setting it up. The gun team comes together and you put it together, all right? That's how the team works, all right, cool. That's kind of like the guys, you know, there's nothing akin to it in the business. You know, like the the immediate corporate sector to where you're like, oh, yeah, that's our water cooler and we're all hanging up. No. You know, it's, I don't know. It's weird. It's like you're only going to do business in those areas, but you're professional all of the time. It's like when you go on base or when you're at work, you're always acting professional, but the whole world is your office. I don't know how to put this into terms. (laughs) Right. Now, see, some of the things like when you're on, I mean, when you do field stuff, when you're in the core or the freaking army or whatever, you don't really, you don't have an office per se. You don't have a place where you do business other than where your, your rucksack is. Right. Right. And traditionally, like when I was in uh, more, more old core type stuff, you, that, that was your mobile office. That was your rucksack, right? The leader's, had their maps and, and yada, 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 and whoever. But then we got, went to, then we actually went to war. And once you are done fighting, that's not your office anymore. Like you have like a place to live, like on a fob or on a, uh, a, uh, outpost or whatever yeah. life. There's even different, more different. Yes. You know, you might have a desk, an actual fucking desk. Oh yeah. Right. Um, I, I mean, I know you do in the COC for sure. Right? Uh, and if you're pulling talk duty or, or whatever the fuck your, your job is there, you have a desk or you have a place of, you know, 
where where you can live, like sit and right. do work, right? I mean, yeah. Um, so so it does. It's so transitional, I guess is the best word. Um, that literally now, uh, and then when you do vehicle operations, it's different. Um, I mean, what I do on a daily basis now is I basically my office is in a fucking car, man. Um, it's very mobile esque. You know, right. And I do have two. I have two offices, but yet I'm barely in them because I my soul dies when I sit there too long. Right. <laughs> um, right. But uh, you know, my mobile office is in my is in my car, and we, you know, kind of funny that we even talk about this is that we 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 are at some point creating uh, a mobile office, right? right? I mean, this is this oh, yeah. is one of our products that. You know, we won't go too in depth with it because uh, we want to protect our ideas uh, and your father's ideas. Well, then it's patented. Uh, because patented. For full, for patented. So yeah. full full <laughs> disclosure: his dad, uh, uh, Mr. Penny, uh, created this <laughs> this thing, which we affectionately call the bumblebee. Yeah. I, at least I affectionately call it that. Um, it is the multi-purpose mobile office. I mean, that's, there you go. That's and it's like, fabulous. It's freaking fabulous. Yeah. Um, but you know, life happens and you, it, you know, it comes in and out of Michael and I's life. Right. Um, well, I use it so, every day. Right. I know you do, but you know, I don't cause I don't have one because we haven't, we haven't created it. Right. He uses the prototype. The original prototype. No, no, no. Believe it or not, that was one of the original to market. That was like one of the cases that went out to market. The old, yeah, yeah. The old right, man but broke it's still, even But it's it. still yeah. the, yeah, that's pretty crazy. Yeah. It's just amazing. It's still anyway, the original so we're, 90s we're gonna improve era. It. Yeah. We're going to improve it for the uh, 20 whatever odd century we're in. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> since who gives a shit? My, my uh, sister-in-law, Sarah, calls it my nerd contraption. Your nerd contraption. Yeah. Well, it's a self-contained freaking office. It's amazing. Yeah. You literally pull it out and boom. You can even, folks, set it in the car seat next to you. Oh, yeah. And strip. Well, so you can, can strap set it, it in. You can set it in the car seat, deploy it open, or have it shut. And you can actually put the seat belt through the side strap so that it stays anchored in three points against the back of the seat. So that when you fold it open... And everything's deployed. It's all secured. Huh. You know, it's almost I, like we should sell it to contractors. I know. <laughs> Just it's the weirdest it's weird. thing. It's the weirdest kind thing. Of, it's kind of like that market. Yeah. Um, well, and, and therein lies the other side of this is it's like I don't work out of an office. Anytime that I went into an office scenario or a co-working scenario or any of these other different places, a little bit of me withered away. Anytime that I went and did any of the retreats and it – you know, working with great people, and that's fine. The people there were great. Being inside of a building all day makes me want to wash my mouth out with buckshot, okay? Being inside all day long makes me suicidal. I need to get the fuck out of the building, and it has nothing to do with the people. It has everything to do with breathing other people's skin flakes all day under fluorescent lighting, I need to go exist outside. Human beings aren't supposed to be inside. Like, it is crazy that we go and exist inside for nine hours a day or whatever. No. And then we go subterranean to ride a train in next to one. No. Jeez, no. So it's like, okay, I never want an office. Check. I always want to be mobile. Check. How can I build my life around that? Roger that. I've got a roller board and the multi-purpose mobile office. I made that up off my head. The multi-purpose mobile office. Boom. Roller board. Office. I'm out the door. And everything all, what I really like about it is I can put my iPad, two laptops, my cell phone, and they all plug into the surge protector which is in the bottom compartment of the the mobile office. Yeah, and then that one plug goes into the wall. I love that because when I'm standing in the airport, I can just unzip that little thing, click, goes into the wall, one plug, all of my devices. It's on a surge protector, which that's a problem. I don't know if you've ever heard of 
people losing their stuff because there will be a surge that goes through an airport. That happens more frequent than I realized, actually. So, anyway. That's the, uh, I had no intention of talking about that on this episode, to be honest with you. I just, I find it interesting because everything that I see that's out there that we're being pushed towards as a, as a veteran population and leaving service is these pre-existing ecosystems. Here, we set this up entirely for you. See, it's just like the military. Nope, you guys really don't get it. The military wants us to be critical thinkers. They want us to, to engage in problem solving. If they just gave us a structure to exist in all the time, we wouldn't be any good at our jobs. We need to adapt and overcome to various situations. So it's kind of weird in that, yeah, I mean, your office is wherever your rucksack is, and then you go and visit the boss over at the COC, which happens to be the brain of your entire operation, and it all exists underneath of one cami net. <laughs> you know? <laughs> like, rem I remember we used to have a ditty. We would just say, set up the office. And that meant... The yeah, set up the office. And that the, meant the, the COC. Tent, the whatever. The cami net, the back of the Humvee, whatever it's in, man. Right. And that, and that was the whole thing. Set up the office. And the office, I could always find it. By the OE that was near it. Remember the big OE antenna? You know what I'm talking about? It was the... Uh, I do know what you're talking about. The monster freaking antenna. Yeah, with the big four thing that goes off the top of it. And all of the com bubbles always make fun of the infantry types because none of us know how to put an OE together and up properly. And it was, it was one of those things. It was crazy. I knew a couple of com bubbles to where they had it all laid out you know, everybody's got their job. That's the whole point. So you deploy out to the field and then everybody has their job to implement something that's out in the field. That's what makes it fun. That's what makes it difficult. You know, there are jobs in the military, don't get me wrong, that, yeah, I guess exist inside of a structure. But the office for us was always something to where, how do we break it down? How do we set it back up? How do we keep it quick? We're not going to be here for very long, but we want to increase our comfort factor as much as we can in that period of time that we're here. And by comfort, I just mean ease of use. Like, uh, you know, the assembly line, so to speak. You, know, you, can't, you can't set up the COC with a boss's desk right here in the map behind him. He's going to be engaged in stuff, blah, blah, blah. You know, you want to set up the COC to where the map's over here and the radio's over there and there's always a uh, standard operating procedure for how you put all of that stuff together. You know, and the same can be said, like for our contractors out there who are on the road, who are helping people, or any of these other mobile off or uh, um, the, the mobile businesses. Like one of them is Get Spiffy, right? That's West Point. Uh, West Point guy, I can't remember his name off the top of my head. Gentleman came in and spoke with us over at Bunker, but he was talking about Get Spiffy as mobile detailing. And how to set up each truck and the SOP behind it and all of that other good stuff. I gleaned a lot of information off the guy. He's very smart and intelligent in how each one of the teams is deployed having everything that they need. But they've got that support structure that's associated with it. It's just, it's interesting in the modern economy in my opinion how you don't really need to always work from a corporate structure all the time or inside even in a, in a co-working spot all the time. For some people, it fits their lifestyle exactly what they need. I'm the type of guy to where I can work from home comfortable. Other people... Yeah, other people can't. Like, um, uh, like take my partner with Battlesight, Nick. He he works in a co-working space. Yep. Now, also, the people that he needs to talk to on a daily basis besides me are basically all there, right? Mm-hmm. So that's a convenience part, but he finds himself getting too distracted from home. And I know exactly what he means. Cause some days I can't do that. Like if my kids are around, like I have a co-working space that I can go to as well, uh, called the tech garden here in Syracuse. And I am a member there and I will go, uh, I'm what's called a virtual member. Yep. So I get all the stuff on, on, uh, you know, online, but there's, you know, the big areas where I can go set up shop for a day if I need. And it's just awesome. Yeah. But I do 
as you know, and as we're speaking right now, I do the majority of my work from a ve- from a vehicle. Yep. And that's the way I like it because I'm outside. I mean, you know, if I could go sit out in the middle of the woods and do it, that would be awesome. But I can't. Right. Not all the time. Well, and, you know. Yeah. And we're going to start to see. I mean, this is just me, in my opinion. We're going to start to see a lot more. Yeah, we run a coffee shop, but there's offices here, here, here in the back kind of a deal. Or I've seen it already in our local community. They have a little uh, um, there's a conference room. You can fit 12 people in there with a speaker inside of a coffee shop so that if you want to do that type of stuff, if you want to do. Yeah, here they have Dunkin Donuts Uh, every almost every. Well, yeah, like three Dunkin Donuts within the town just that I live in. They all have a conference room in them. Yeah. Yeah. And see. there's people it's booked all the time. Um, right. So, but anyway, you well, know, and, it, and that's happening in those metropolitan areas. And I think you're going to start to see it in my opinion, more around the residential, the neighborhood. Well, what's crazy is here in Syracuse. And when I lived in Wilmington down there in North Carolina, there's a bunch of different places where there, I mean, the bleeding hearts will call it the gentrification of the inner city again. Right. But it's where they're taking old warehouse buildings. They're turning the bottom floor into work spaces or like retail or uh, commercial spaces. Yep. And everything above them is apartments yep. or condos or whatever. Right. So then people, I mean, we've got them all over the place in Syracuse here where people literally walk upstairs their home and they walk downstairs and they're working right in an office right right or like take like uh in wilmington north carolina they've got places like mayfair which is an outdoor shopping mall with restaurants and entertainment and the whole thing right yeah but there are apartments all on the second story of all those buildings uh, right. So people literally can walk down to downstairs and go to the grocery store, which is right by there, or um, go to the restaurants or whatever, you know? Yeah. It's this whole, like, almost like they're bringing, trying to bring back the sense of Main Street back. Remember? I mean, I remember Main Street. And I know you do because Midland has one. Yeah. Um, still to this day. But a lot of places don't have that Main Street feel anymore. It's kind of cool. I mean, it's... You know, not right. not if you lived in Midland because it's Potterstown, right. Illuminativille, <laughs> as I always say. Oh my God, <coughs> you killing me, Mr. Dow Chemical. Oh and, my God, and, and friend Dow seen, and friends. Seeing Dow Chemicals uh, logo on Dale Earnhardt's, you know, right. number. Oh yeah. no, right, right. That's not <laughs> so okay. anyway. But besides all that, you know, it's kind of, it's just neat. I don't know. I, I think I just like my, you know, cause my office in the Marine Corps was a Harbor site and we were hunkered down in the middle of a swamp. It sucked. Or, <laughs> or we were up on top of a mountain in a freaking relay site or oh. LPOP or not an LP. Cause there wasn't any LP. There was a lot of OPing though. Right? <laughs> uh, right. And like, you know, when we were doing JTF six stuff, we we're hiding from freaking hikers for Christ's sake. Oh yeah. Right. Well, it's like, uh, did I ever tell on the air, the story of that, the lady on the car, did I ever tell that one? I don't know. When we were in Bridgeport. Oh my God. We were out on the perimeter. I was visiting the perimeter and, uh, and it was where I learned how to be a patrol leader was up in Bridgeport. It was where I really started using, the op order for what it was intended and started to lead patrols and get my feet wet. And so I have not seen it all yet. I still haven't seen it all, frankly, but I hadn't been around the block as a patrol leader yet. And I was going around out to the perimeter and just kind of, Hey, can I get you anything? Can I get you anything? You know, all of that other kind of stuff instead of really working it through my team leaders and stuff. So I'm out there. And uh, my buddy's like, dude, you got you to gotta see this. And so I creep up to the edge of the tree line where these guys are set in. And uh, there's a couple who's parked on the other side of the road. And, um, oh, my God. So 
he the 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 gentleman in question is snapping photos of his girlfriend who is stripping on the side of the road and she is just straight down to the buff lay down on the hood of the car the whole nine with this beautiful waterfall and mountain picturesque scene behind her and all of this other stuff right you could tell why they chose that vista as their spot they just had no idea that they parked I mean, adjacent to a squad of Marines. And so, you know, she throws her stuff back on and and is getting ready to climb back in the car. And a Marine down the way is like, oh, come on. And this guy immediately, you know, he does the alpha male thing. He's like, hey, who, who the fuck said that asshole? And it's like, Marines, up. And we all just stepped out of the tree line. Like, oh, Fuck that. The old boy scrambled getting back into his vehicle. That's amazing. Just out of there, dude. Like, no. Oh, dude. Uh, it was just one of those. Like, come on, baby. Oh, God. It was one of those. This is what man. happens when you go out and strip in the woods, jackasses. Well, yeah. I mean, you're on the side of a freaking highway. Anybody could have driven by. It was just one of those to where it was, you know. Oh, what a beautiful mountain vista. Come on, let's snap some photos. Oh, my God. It was... <clears throat> yep, that was pretty excellent. Let's get naked, honey. Yep. I'll tell you, when you ever bring up swamp, my my brain snaps right back to that smell. You know that smell? Oh, g- yes, yes. In dude, the swamp? I- I have nightmares about that smell, oh, so I don't even want to hear your God. Your and it's not a bog. <laughs> It's not a bog either. No, no, no. There's no whining. It's just it's the smell. It's part of whining. The, that's it. It's whining. like it's like when you go into Vegas. There's that smell near the elevators. I don't know what the fuck it is, but there's that smell. When you say Vegas, I remember it, right? But when you say putting in an OP in the middle of a swamp, it smells like it smells like chocolate chips. And smells candy. like candy. It smells like Teen Spirit. Cotton candy. That's what it is. Smells like chocolate chips and candy canes. Right. I smell. Fuck, man. I smell decaying vegetation and cami paint. When you say swamp, bro, like I lived. I lived in yeah. that. That was my life. <laughs> I swear to Christ. And every Lejeune Marine uh, will know exactly what I'm talking yeah. about. It's fucking awful. See. And like you get it in there, man. And you just can't get it out. The only way you're getting it out is once you get back from the field, take your camis off. You might as well just get in the shower with them on, right? Grab a beer. Yes. Drink it in the shower. Shaving cream take that off. all over your you face. You have to all over your face, <laughs> aloe, whatever you're using to get the cami paint off. You have to, like, drink alcohol to get – and then you must, you must grab like a nose hair trimmer, like one of the, you know, yes. things that are like, you know, yes. to like get any excess bog swamp stank <laughs> off of the hairs that's like embedded in the hairs in your nose. Yeah. You have to, you have to do that. Yeah. So shaving cream, shave your face, do whatever you, oh my God, bro. Other ways, it permeates everything. Yep. It's horrific. The ladies love it. <clears throat> yeah, I'm sure. They love it. That and some bulldog cologne, and you are pretty much ready for the weekend. You should grab your web belt and your jungle boots, and uh, yeah. And your green t-shirt. There you go. Have fun. See, I, I don't know why we're complaining. Okay, we're, we wear pajamas and boots to work. We drive around in luxury automobiles. You're out just getting a mud mask. I was exfoliating out in the desert. I mean, really, come on. It's not that That's bad. That's it. And when I sat on the beach, I was just getting a salt, a salt, uh, salt treatment. Right. right. Exactly. Yeah, that's all. That's it. It's good for the pores. I was, I was doing, uh, I was doing uh, what is that? The float tank out in the middle of the ocean. Right. That's all. I love. But well, I just had fins on. That's all. Well, and, and okay, so the the mobile off, uh, office aspect of things, you have what's on your kit. That's like an office for a certain period of time. You know, that's like I always rolled around with a three day sus- 
sustainment pack. It was a very small, tight, compressed. I had all my, you know, food and rations, whatever I needed in there for three days without having to carry a ruck or anything else like that. And then if I brought my day pack, I could survive out there for about a week, week and a half, just doing work. And then if I brought the main pack, I mean, survive indefinitely kind of a deal. Yeah, I've got all of my creature comforts from home. But it's funny because when I see, you know, there's like gear porn, for instance, all over uh, uh, Instagram, right? There's all these guys with the kit and blah, 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 blah. All right, that's great. You have excellent gear. What was your training like? Because those guys that have the really kick-ass, you know, office, essentially they're wearing their office. That's it. They're just, that's it. All of their kit. Can they actually employ everything that's on their body? It's always my question whenever I see this. Well, people. what's the what's the guy? What's the one dude? The he one. wasn't in the military, but uh, meat eater. Oh, 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 uh, uh, Rochella. Steve, Steve Rochella. Steve Rochella. Yeah. Yeah. Now, like that dude, like gets he goes to work. Yes. Right. Exactly. Like that's his actual job, basically. I mean, besides the, that, he films and writes about it. Yeah. You know, his job is hunting. Yes. Um, and he gets real. I mean, he gets out there. He, you know, he packs in some food, but you know, that he'll was... be the first one to say that if he doesn't, if he doesn't kill something, he's not eating. <laughs> you know what I mean? Right. That kind of stuff. So pretty cool. That's that line. You have the right to pursue your own happiness. That means that you don't. You know, you don't have to play the game. You can jump out and you can go and do, you know, that which you need to do in order to go and survive. I mean, don't look wrong, at but... like, look at like, you know, talking about mobile office uh, on steroids. Look at like Leo Jenkins. Oh, yeah. And, you know, the van life. Right. I mean, Marty, Marty Scovlin did it, too. Yeah. Uh, and they both write and all this other stuff out of their, uh, you know. It's madness. Well, yeah. Pretty cool. And I I specifically wanted to bring it up because I see, man, if I was coming out the back gate again, all over, all over again, you know, you you can't rewrite the past. Hindsight's always 2020. But if I look at it right now, if I was coming out the back gate right now, just based on here's the pathway that is available. This is already set up. Right, no other new program stuff. I would have done now two years at a whether it's a community college or a trade school, whatever the case may be, to understand that skill set or find a, a skill set within the skilled labor market that I could call upon essentially, right? To say, okay, you know, a, a trade to fall back on is not where I'm going with this. A skilled trade that I can then leap off of, use that as a springboard towards success. And I say it that way because two years at a trade school, you have at least enough understanding of your capabilities to be able to go out and do whatever you need to do, whether that's handyman, independent contractor, you're learning the ropes. And then really what it boils down to is, are you running the business correctly? Well, you know, five paragraph business plan is there. And then let's say, for instance, you want to be a contractor. Well, I would work with HACOA. Uh, I, I would get referrals through HACOA. I would use five paragraph. I would use all of my GI Bill. So the next two years would go towards essentially finishing up that bachelor's degree. That pathway is laid out. It's already there. It exists. You know, without reinventing anything. Um, I don't know. I just, I sit there and I say to myself, how can, with five paragraph, how can we get out and about and deploy to all of these different places across the U.S. where we're helping folks? I mean, it's overwhelming how many people are coming to the table with five paragraph needs, which it's fantastic. I mean, it's excellent. Visit us at fiveparagraph.com. You know, but... It's interesting because the office in Cat was a completely different office than the office with, you know, like in Quantico. Our office was, we actually had offices and we had a schoolhouse. And then we went down to the range and we conducted training. So it was kind of 50-50 being in a classroom 
being out outdoors on a, on a existing range. It was a pretty cool lifestyle, you know, as far as how the office and everything worked together, you know, and it's, I think, I think that the traditional mold of what a quote unquote office looks like has already been just absolutely blown to smithereens. Yeah, I would agree. I just, there's so many people who are working remote. There's so many people who are working from home. Um, and I'm one of those guys to where I have no problem working from home and I have no problem working on the road. Uh, I don't do well in and around co-working spots or anything else like that. I don't do well um, in like, a, I don't know. I just don't do well in office buildings and stuff. It's like, why? Why am I in here? <laughs> why am I here? What are the egress routes out of this place? I want to get the hell out of here. I don't, I don't know. So, I, you know, it's funny because anybody who ever calls me or engages with me, especially during, you know, the days that it's nice outside, I spend the majority of my time out on the screened in porch. That's where I work the majority of the time when weather permits. And I'm out there with a laptop and I'm out there on the cell phone and my neighbors are the geese and the ducks. And sorry if they're loud every once in a while. I tell them to shut the fuck up all the time. They just don't pay attention to me. Anyway, but yeah, For sure. I want Freaking I, I want to help people with it. I mean, this is this is honestly, I'm not in plan. Yeah, on... like freedom, man. Right, I mean, and that's really what it comes down to. And is uh, a lot of times you can't do that if you have a I don't know, man. I it's just one of those things. Like I, yeah, I have a buddy who actually works for the Department of Defense that really like bargained it out, like just showed and parceled the fact that listen. I can do what you want me to do from a remote location. Um, you know what I mean? And he's able to work that out and more jobs, more people. I mean, even if you're, even if you only have to go into the office like two or three days a week, that's like a gift. You just have to take advantage of it. Yeah. You know, you have to, you have to bargain it out with your employer. Well, and <clears throat> yeah. So check out, like, like take your life back a little bit. doesn't mean that you, that you, but oh, Jesus, man, it, the fluorescent lights inside a cubicle will kill you. Oh yeah. That'll drain your soul right out your body. Well, and I, I would say this, okay, because I know that four hour work week is on our reading list. I know that it's on five paragraph.com. I believe it is. And I believe it's on cigars and sea stories, uh, under our shop page. But if you're not already familiar with four hour work week, it's great. I would say that it's great if you've already got your business idea and everything else lined up and flat out use five paragraph business plan. It's at five paragraph.com. This is for anything. This is for your pre-existing work structure, you know, and yeah, we're breaking the stigma of business plan. Business plan is not something that you dust off every once in a while. Business plan is how you operate your business. Yeah. That's it. You use your five paragraph business plan every single day. And when you use it every single day, you'll very quickly realize that you only exist in the execution paragraph and you get shit done. I mean, it's just that simple. And if you don't believe us, I don't give a shit. Billion dollar companies believe us. I don't care. Trains leaving the station because I say it that way because you have the right, the inalienable right to pursue your own happiness. Great. You got a business idea. You know what you want to do. Let's say, for instance, you work within a pre-existing structure and you're trying to convince your command echelon in order to allow a little bit more freedom. Pick up four hour work week. Tim Ferriss is excellent at that. What's your plan here? Brief it in five paragraph op order fashion. Or in five paragraph business plan, right? The whole, does it work? Yeah, it does. It's been around since the birth of our nation. I guarantee that it works. How about that? I guarantee that if you, you apply the five paragraph business plan, it will work, but it only works if you work it. That's the whole point. You know, I, I really do. I want, I want more people breaking out of that mold, more, more folks coming out of the corporate America, running their own entrepreneurial activities and everything else. Five paragraph works. Get the book. Sign up for it's ninety nine dollars a year. You know, you sign up for that. You're part of the business development group. 
We're going to intro emails to you. We're going to introduce people who can help you work on your business. And while you're working in yours, depending on what it is, we're going to introduce you to other folks who are potential clientele, depending on what that circumstance is, essentially. Uh, but call us up. Get in touch with us as advisors over at fiveparagraph.com. It's great because I, they blend together. They just blend together so well. Cigars and Sea Stories, what we do, five paragraph, what we do, how we interact with people and the audience that's out there. And we've been working very diligently in the background with a whole group of folks, a whole team, not just advisors, but internal team who help us with a logistics component, human resources component, case management. It's excellent. And uh, we're going to have those members together in order to explain sort of what we do uh, as a group of people. We're not consultants. We are advisors. We help you stand everything up so that you can stand up whatever office, wherever that office is, whether it's mobile, whether it's on your body. We know how to bring it all the way down to just nothing and still be able to work. That that That's yep. our job. <laughs> so, yep. Oh, man, I love it, dude. I I love this so damn much. Ugh. This is a this is a fun job. You know? Yeah, for sure. This is my office right now. I'm sitting in the studio. Uh-huh. Well, that's pretty I'm sitting, yeah. It's awesome. <laughs> Do you have any factoids for our people? There aren't actually I, I no, there aren't really. I, I think <clears throat> what what you just talked about is the fact of the other day. I I can appreciate that. Make it make it make it happen. Literally, just you know, if you've got a something that you want to chase it after, then make it so. Yep. Well, and, if and you, break free from the chains of freaking you know the man. Frankly. Right. Well, and and I can tell you flat out, uh, if you're not already on VeteransList.us. Get on Veterans List. If you want to get a featured membership, like you're up, you're rolling, you're making money, you're doing okay, but you need to get in front of more people, get a featured membership on VeteransList.us because they they push, they're, they're not a list builder per se. What they do is they're a, a listing referral provider. And so what I really love about this is you flesh out your profile on there. And again, if you haven't already listened to this before, you can get a featured membership half off, 50% off, by entering in discount code Cigars and C. VeteransList.us puts you in front of other referral networks that are out there, right? So case in point would be HOKOA. So if you're a contractor, you want to get lined up, hop on VeteransList.us. You'll be counted as one of those veteran contractors that's out there up rolling. Here's all of the variables associated with it and then can be called upon for that referral network. If you need to learn more about it, no problem. Message us. Just go ahead, you know, PM me or something like that over Facebook. Check out veteranslist.us. Check out hokoa.com. Uh, hokoa, H-O-C-O-A, the Home Repair Network. Uh, Hakoa is coast to coast. Uh, we are helping them with five paragraph business plan and advising them through a massive expansion. And yeah, helping them expand. It, it, yeah, massive, massive expansion. And I say it that way because they are looking for fellow veterans who would like to pick up the guide on in their area of operation. So you're part of the the greater overall Hakoa network of owners uh, who are supporting agencies, essentially, or adjacent units is the best way to put it, because Five Paragraph is the supporting agency associated with that. Um, so we help folks set up their Hakoa units, plain and simple. We help you get up, get rolling, making money, and then we work with you and your contractors in the area in order to help accelerate your contractors, in order to grow those contractors. And frankly, and unashamed, uh, we all make money doing it. That's the whole point. We're all going out there and we are buyers of each other's services, but we work very closely in order to achieve the highest quality customer satisfaction that's out there. And you'll see what we're talking about. Capitalists wanted. It's all about that, baby. 
So check out veteranslist.us. Check out Thigh Paragraph. Uh, Heroes Media Group, our podcasting network, they are freaking blowing up and doing great things. So check out HMG, Heroes Media Group. A tip of the cap to Adam Bird, you're doing great things over there. Spartan Media, they can help you design your website, your construction, general contracting, more focused towards a commercial, uh, but they can hook you up, check out Spartan Media. And we've got to have Jeremy on the show here. We're going to have him. We keep saying that we're going to have Jeremy, and it never aligns. And then uh, Thomas McPherson, last but not least, of McPherson Marketing Group. He can help you out with the reviews, the marketing packages, all of those other good things. And again, we can introduce you to all of these people. It's not like they're sponsoring through money all of the show. We are buyers of each other's services. That's how this collaboration works. It's business development, people. you got to love it. I do. I mean, it's one of those. Anyway, get in touch with us. We are always here to help you out. Check out thighparagraph.com. Check out all of the other folks that we're working with so that we can get you hooked up. If you yourself have other sea stories about your own mobile app, maybe there's some pictures. Maybe there's, what was your office like? Maybe you're a, uh, a, a seaman out there bobbing around in the middle of the ocean. And you've got a giant metal office that you want to take a picture of. By all means. You know, maybe it's a rack that you can't fully turn over in, and that's just, that's your office. Man, that sucks. Never got stuck on a ship. Woo! Dodge that bullet. All right. Anyway, <laughs> that's funny. That pretty much wraps it up for us. There you go. Got a There was no marining in the marine there. No. I just went to the desert and fought terrorists. I'm cool. And then I was like, all right, I'm out. So, yeah. Uh, I never did routine um, uniform inspections. I like garrison life started to come back around to the Marine Corps. And I said, fuck it. I'm out of here. Yeah. Fucking boot. Break glass in case of war. There you go. Fucking boot. Boot, oh, yeah. boot, boot. Oh man. You're a boot. I will totally own that shit. I, I know you do. I, I know. will We've had own this conversation it. Many I, times. I will be a boot with a star on my combat action ribbon any day. That's right. That's exactly. Absolutely. I'll be that boot. Yep. <laughs> there you go, folks. That's it. why you stick around to the end. I love your body, baby. All right. Anyway, that wraps up another episode. We're out of here, people. And on that note, we cue the music. I will flag up to every breeze from dawn to setting sun.